Good morning, everyone. Tractor Man 44 here. I think I remember telling Joe Lesage and Dave from RCAF Polar Express when Dave was using the forks on uh, on Joe's quick attach uh, forks he made for his case. He was using those forks with his Mahindra to to dig out a stump, and I think I made a comment in his uh, in his replies about a homemade rock digger, uh, stump digger, whatever you want to call it, uh, that was befriended to me or not too long ago by a neighbor lady of mine for doing a little bit of work. And uh, it's actually made up for Quick Attach too. So we're gonna get to use that today. Uh, somewhat of a unique story. Y'all are probably gonna enjoy. Uh, probably, probably some of you are gonna frown a little bit. And uh, there's gonna be some that probably say we ain't supposed to do it or can't do it, but we're gonna do it anyway. But anyway, take a look at this thing right here. Use it. This is the first opportunity that we've had to use it. Uh, so we're gonna, but we're not gonna dig something with it. You'll see. Now, fortunately, I can say it's not every day we get in a situation where we have to do something like this. But uh, take a look at this dump trailer behind us. Unfortunately, the goose part of the gooseneck is at entirely the wrong angle. And what should be a straight portion of the frame is no longer straight. It's bent up at about a 20 degree angle and it's actually fractured right at the bottom. Now that was uh, box tubing, uh, two inch by six inch box tubing. It actually broke on this side, but um, it bent like that on the other side too. So we gotta go about the business of fixing it. So we're just using that rock bucket to hold that gooseneck in the bucket so we can transport this over to the uh, to the overhead and get ready to start cutting it apart and figure out how to fix it. You notice how the front wheel, the tandem, is cocked in on this side. It's cocked in on this side as well. Uh, as luck would have it, the uh, hydraulic cylinder came loose off the bottom and uh, in doing so, flipped backwards, caught the front axle and bent the front axle inward. So that necessitates uh, an axle replacement at the same time. That's what we're doing. Kind of hard to do this, keep an eye on everything and narrate the whole procedure. But that rock, that rock bucket is doing a fine job. That gooseneck is just resting right in there. And that's what we want to do is safely transport this thing without having to mess with hooking it onto a truck. It's gonna be quite a lot of, uh, quite a lot of repair is gonna to happen to this thing. And we're gonna go back a lot heavier than what uh, what that original tubing was. I guarantee you that. My boy's in his element here today. He's a heavy equipment operator, so we're uh, having a good time moving this back in the hole. Have to go negotiate a couple of tree branches and a, a low uh, electric line and some lawn furniture and my uh, generator here on the other side. You got you got two feet. And what our goal is, unbeknownst to me, when I cleaned that out the other day, was within about a 72-hour period of being done with that, we were going to need it for this particular repair. Apologize for the jerky camera, but uh, trying to do multiple things at once. Well, I guess now you can kind of see the idea behind why I have so many chain falls. I've got two of them on the back, supporting the back end of the bed so it doesn't pinch together. Well, uh, two chain binders right here holding the bed up securely. And then we've got yet another uh, another chain fall here holding the uh, the gooseneck for whenever we disconnect it right here. And uh, that's what we're going to do is we're going to cut this off right here, remove the damage as much as possible. And of course, we've got to uh, remove the axle that is no longer in too good a shape, as you can tell by the bend in the middle. It's bad enough damage, but we're trying to determine exactly how and where to, uh, to make our repair and how to go about it. Okay, there's the bad axle. Well now that we've uh, assessed the damage and have decided on the game plan, it's time to begin. So uh, we went ahead and used the, we used the overhead hoist now to disconnect and elevate the bed. Now what we did, we went ahead and stripped the gusset off of this side. The gusset went from right here about the, the location where it bent. Uh, you can obviously see that light duty uh, two by six box tubing just crinkled up. But that gusset went all the way up here right underneath the uh, the crank and then uh, terminated up there. Uh, we decided to uh, get it to where we could work on it a whole lot nicer and a whole lot easier.
Now, what I'm doing, uh, simply because uh, we need as, much, need as much space as possible under that overhang, is we're going to uh, back this heavier trailer down and set that bed right on top of this and then transport it back in the woods, uh, just back behind the shed somewhere, you know, so we can work on this pretty easily. Um, it is going to be uh, quite a considerable repair, and we still have to determine whether or not we're going to uh, uh, be replacing the entire frame or just repairing the existing frame. Um, I don't know, it just depends on what it's going to look like. Whichever direction we go, we definitely want to make sure that it's uh, it's substantial and uh, we definitely want it to be heavier than, than what it was. That was a, a, a .116 uh, box tubing, very thin material, but it still was rated, I believe, at uh, 10,000 pounds. Um, 10 or 12,000 pound uh, uh, trailer weight, or gross weight. But at any rate, um, now you can see, you know, how, how beneficial it is to have access to those chain calls because, uh, you know, you just kind of raise up one and then the other. I don't really want to put the, the bed in a twist or a bind, so that's why I'm trying to raise it up reasonably level. And I think I've only got one on the front here. Um, but I'm just going to get it high enough to where I can back the uh, trailer under it and settle on some uh, railroad tie uh, blocks or something like that, possibly six by sixes, and then uh, transport it out of here. So, uh, so far, so good. Now, what I got to do is I got to uh, to get that high enough, um, and I'll go ahead and back the trailer under a little bit, and then uh, probably uh, probably have to elevate the back end of it a little bit more is what I was thinking. Uh, and sure enough, that's exactly what I had to do. Um, you, you try to get it, you know, right the first time, but, you know, that, that very seldom ever happens, especially on something as large as what this is. Now, about them chain calls, every one of those chain calls are rated... Uh, I think the smallest one up there was like a ton and a half or a two ton, uh, what I'm using right now. So you know, you don't have to worry about uh, anything being unsafe, whatever, the brakes all work, you know, everything is just uh, just fine. Uh, you just have to be careful when you're, when, you're, when you're working around this stuff, especially working by yourself. Uh, my son happens to be working this particular day, so he doesn't get there until, until way later this afternoon. But uh, at any rate, we uh, do manage to get it uh, pretty, pretty safely uh, secured on the trailer. And uh, you'll see in a few seconds here, we'll, uh, we'll go ahead and, and pull it away, pull it out of the way, and then, and then uh, go ahead and back the trailer frame back down into the space. But, um, you know, it's amazing the things that, that a fella can do by himself if he just really wants to, you know. Uh, I've always worked by myself, you know, in, on my job site. Well, occasionally, I, I've been on crews and stuff like that, you know, uh, running pipe and everything. But for the most part, you know, I've been doing uh, commercial and industrial service. Uh, pretty much work by myself, you know, primarily. Uh, so you just get used to it. It just, it just ain't no big deal. It's second nature. You learn to uh, to do things and, and not get hurt. And if you get hurt, well, you know, you uh, try not to get hurt the next time you're doing the same thing, you know. So here we got it. We got it on the uh, on the low boy or the, uh, the tandem axle uh, deck over trailer. Normally I would uh, go ahead and try to abuse this little tractor and, and scratch on up the hill with it but because I don't want to create an issue I'm going to unhook and go ahead and uh, bring my old Ford and hook my old Ford up to it. Uh, that way I don't want to have any problems you know about halfway up the hill. Well, my son got done doing what he was doing this morning and uh, came over to give me a hand here just in time to grade out this area where we're going to be working to go ahead and set the framework back in place so we can get started on uh, cutting, that, uh, cutting that gooseneck off and repairing the frame. What we're doing when we're disconnecting this in a fashion that's going to allow us to reinforce everything that we're uh, that we're that we're rebuilding uh, so we're taking taking time to make some very specific cuts at this point and uh, we've got the a-frame supported up here with the overhead we've got a one of the chain falls holding there the second one ready to hold there but we've also got the bucket of the tractor to catch it right there in, in case we have an emergency 
Okay, we pretty much cut off with the metabos, and then we took a torch and finished up the last little bit. Now we're going to start separate the, uh, the gooseneck. He's backing up real gentle. If you notice up top, my uh, trolley will just carry right along, right along the I-beam and allow him to separate that just exactly the way we want it to. So we're going to stop right about there. That's good. Now we're going to go about the business of getting that secured up on some uh, some uh, stands in order to, uh, to work on it a little more carefully. And we can true this all up, trim this off, cut it where we want it to make the joint. Now I didn't think about it while we were out there cutting that gooseneck off. That was really a good stopping point, you know, for the end of part one. Consequently, it's, it's dark now, you know, and I'm, I'm sitting inside kind of fiddling around with the computer and decided that uh, that's where I need to cut it off. You can see that it's going to be somewhat of an issue. And what we've got to do, too, to make the decision as to whether or not we'll make a joint right there and just repair the uh, two-foot portion that actually bent up or replace the entire frame is going to be determined uh, when we stretch a string and see if either one or both of the sides of the frame, the trailer frame, are bowed. If the uh, sides of the trailer frame are bowed when that axle kicked back, of course, then we're going to make a whole entire frame, you know, for the, uh, for the trailer. But we'll determine that tomorrow. I ain't got nothing else to add to this. I hope you're enjoying this. This is going to be a fun one. Of course, they're all fun. Just some of them are more fun than others. This is Tractor Man 44. You know what? I am out of here.